I'm Tracy Lawrence, and you're watching Lynx 24, connecting you to the community. Welcome to your hometown news program. I'm April Frelke along with my co-host Nick Kaufman. And I will be co-hosting for, uh, this is the last night for the next several nights. I'll be gone for March. Yes, so you'll next, be, you'll have you to will be, be gone. We'll I be, will be gone. You will be missed, Nick. Thank you very much. And you will be here with, probably with uh, Joe. Joe Minnie will be filling in and I, I may be gone one night too. And we might have Joe and Cody. So we'll kind of mixing it up in March. Okay. March Madness and the Anchors. I'll be Nick. back for the April Fools. Okay, yeah, Show. April 1st. Hey, um, Monroe County voters are invited to learn more about a new thing called Fair Maps. It's a referendum. Now, on March 1st, Matt Rothschild and Tara Johnson will describe how gerrymandering affects local and state governments. Their presentation will be from 2 until 3 p.m. at the American Legion on Angelo Road in Sparta. A referendum vote is scheduled for April 7th, that, and this event will be a great way to gather information. This is open to the public and is free. Now, Matt Rothschild is from Wisconsin Democracy Campaign. Tara Johnson is from the League of Women Voters. Gerrymandering is a big deal. Okay, it's, mm -hmm. been, it's been through the courts here in the state, so it's a very, very interesting subject. Yes, it is. Okay, moving things around to yeah, like one political group represents or what area? Yeah, right. and your phone. Yeah, phone. it can be very bad. Toma Health will hold a Parkinson support group on Tuesday, March third, from two until three thirty p.m. They'll be the first in the first floor conference room B at the Gopher Drive campus. Kristen Gerke, a speech pathologist, and Michelle Goldsmith, occupational therapy assistant, will discuss health concerns related to Parkinson's disease. Toma Health has a highly specialized exercise program designed for patients with movement disorders, and patients can learn new motor skills that work in everyday activities. This group meets the first Tuesday of each month. If you'd like to learn more, call Julie Anderson at 377-8781 or send an email to janderson at tomahealth.org. You know much about that? No? What's no. going on with that? I don't either. Okay, yeah. It'll be interesting, though. Yep. Well, give Jane Fela, is it Fela or Fela? Jane Fela, we're going to go that way. A few nights stay at the transplant house while you learn to make your own basket. Jane is a fellow artist and art teacher in Toma Area School District and who is receiving treatment for cancer and could use your help. Margie Jenrick and Rose Berry will be hosting this fundraiser at On the Corner, uh, that shop, in Toma on Saturday, March 7th from 9 to noon. We will learn to create a napkin basket and enjoy wonderful lunch for just $30. All the funds will go to Jane to cover one night stay at the transplant house in Rochester. And on the corner, we'll be matching the proceeds, which means your basket will provide two nights for Jane. If you're interested, contact Roseberry at 374-2120. Oh, that's a wonderful idea for a fundraiser. Yeah, then you actually leave with your little basket, but yeah. you're contributing to helping her out. Yeah, I hope I got her name right. Jane Fella or Fela? Like, I think Fella. I didn't practice that. Okay. okay. New Lisbon School District will hold their family fun event, family fun event on Friday, March 6th from 10 a.m. until noon. There will be door prizes, face painting, hands-on exhibits, a book fair, and read to Rover. Often kids feel judged and evaluated by peers and family, but Read to Rover is just a child reading to a therapy pet who is happy to enjoy the child's voice. Books and new words become something exciting to share. The program builds a child's love of reading, and that will last a lifetime. I love that idea of reading to your pet, because the dog's not going to judge, doesn't know if you know your words or not. Okay, I'll have to work on that a little I bit. I love that but Rachel that, Rover, Nick. It's so beautiful. Gotcha. I'm with you. Because they're just sitting there and they're loving the child, a little loving bit, to read. A little bit okay. something for everybody. Yes. That's what I like. Uh, Blackberry Hill Adult Family Homes is looking for CNAs or experienced caregivers who love challenges and are non-judgmental and forgiving. A true caregiver. Now, they offer three days on and four days off in 12-hour shifts, perfect for college students or a two-income family. Looking for some extra income? Blackberry Hill serves adults 18 years or older who may be developmentally delayed, developmentally delayed, 
frail, elderly, with physical and or mental impairments. Some activities uh, may include shopping, playing cards, fishing, cooking, or just being a willing listener. It's amazing how a job like this can turn into a true blessing for both caregiver and resident. Blackberry Hill is offering signed, uh, sign up bonuses, health benefits, and specialized training. Starting wage depends on your experience, and they do or they will be having a job fair on March 3rd. You can contact Valerie Smith at 608 387 6032. Valerie is very active in that stuff. You know yes, her well. We, we've had them on before. Yeah, we have. Um, uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. So that would be a great opportunity for someone who's interested in, in helping out. I like it. Well, catering for cast and crew has been provided by Marco's Italian American Grill and Warren's. Great food with fun, relaxing atmosphere at Marco's. Health Check 360 is up next. Mm -hmm. You want it? We'll find it. You got it. Price match and relax. That's the Rudick Jensen deal. Sealed with a platinum level membership. Oil changes, done. Tires, brakes, alignment, all done. Car wash, you got it. Rudick Jensen Auto Mall, New Lisbon. Check out our inventory online at rudickjensen.com. The Oakdale Credit Union has spent decades serving Oakdale, Mauston, and Reedsburg. From comprehensive financial services to reliable mortgage loans, we strive to provide unparalleled care. I like the warm and friendly atmosphere each and every time I come in. The staff is very knowledgeable and truly cares about its members. Come and learn more about the Oakdale Credit Union, where we treat you like a member of the family. My name is Heidi Stalsberg. I'm the director of Toma Health Hospice Touch Life Choices Palliative Care. We have hospice home care. We have palliative care, which is a home care service. And then we have Serenity House, which is our eight bed residential facility here in Toma. Hospice Touch and Life Choices Palliative Care provides medical services, emotional support, and spiritual resources. Toma Health Hospice and Palliative Care, inspiring health, wellness, and balance. Abra Auto Body and Glass, a division of Rudig Jensen in New Lisbon, can handle everything from major auto and truck body damage to windshield replacements, filling chips, dents, and door dings. Featuring a 46-foot custom paint booth for boats, RVs, trailers, you name it. If it fits, we can paint it. State-of-the-art facility, aluminum repair certified, all makes and models, foreign and domestic, all insurance companies welcome. Rest assured, repairs will be done right the first time, on time. Call Abra Auto Body and Glass in New Lisbon today. Hello, I'm Colonel Eric Peterson, commander of the 115th Fighter Wing, and you're watching Lynx 24, connecting you to the community. The road to recovery can be faster using aquatic therapy, and that's just one of the many services offered at Toma's Health new facility. We have Toma Health physical therapist Chris Lawson to give us the details on this edition of Health Check 360. Chris, welcome to the Lynx. Great to have you with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so aquatic therapy pool. Mm -hmm. What is, what's that about? What What's featured in that? Makes it different than a swimming pool, a regular pool. So aquatic therapy is for patients who've been injured or have a musculoskeletal injury or mm. a different variety of problems that they have difficulty being on land. So oh, what's okay. unique about that is the temperature of the water. Um, it's 92 degrees, oh, so it's oh, yeah. thermo neutral. So it's comfortable when they get in the pool. It's okay. not cold and it's not too hot, so they can move. And the uniqueness about our pool is that it's 10 by 14. Um, you know, the distance that they have, the length and the width. Um, it's four different levels. There's a three by six foot level, okay. or three by six inches. Um, three foot by six, sorry about so that. So it's kind of going like, Right, deeper, so there's shallow. There's, like, right, there's four stairs to get in. Okay. There's a four foot level, and then there's a five foot level and a six mm. foot level. So it accommodates different heights oh, of sure, patients. Oh, sure, right. Right, mm -hmm. so if you have someone my height, you're going to be, be in the four foot level. If you have someone who's six foot seven, yeah, like they an might athlete. be, right, mm -hmm. they might be in the five foot level okay. or in the six foot level, okay. kind of depending on what they need. And so one of the cool things about the pool is that we have. Um, not just the uh, temperature of the water, but also the hydrodynamics of the pool, using the properties of the pool oh. with the viscosity, the uh, hydrostatic pressure, and um, the buoyancy, which is the big factor. Because with buoyancy, you have the uh, 
pressure of the buoyancy going up and you have the gravity going down, but with the buoyancy, you feel lighter in the water. So at this height, when you have the water at this level, you weigh about 25% of your weight. So then it's a lot more Ooh. comfortable to be in the pool sure. than to be on land. So people can start doing more things in the water and get confidence and feel comfortable in the pool to do things and get stronger and feel like they can do more activities in the water, get stronger, and then eventually get out into really the land. Really giving them confidence right. in their own recovery. Right, right. So is it unique that Toma Health has like an aquatic pool in a facility in our yes. area? Yes, for a critical access hospital to have a pool is very unique. And Phil Stewart, our CEO and my director, mm -hmm. Uh, Tim Corpine, they had a lot of foresight and vision to see that we could use this um, facility to, to enhance people to get better, faster. Right. You have to go about 45 minutes away to even find another therapy pool <sighs> in the area. So to have it here and people don't have to travel yeah. is amazing to do that. That is. And mm -hmm. what, what reaction have you had from your patients so far having used it or even some of the physical therapists being able to use that kind of resource? Right. Right. Every patient that we've had so far, and we've really started seeing patients in January. Okay, so kind of um, every, new. Right, every patient so far said, this is amazing. They had no idea that they'd feel so good being in the water. <sighs> right, so we've had some patients that have had very severe accidents or mm -hmm. injuries, and for them to get in the water and not have pain, because most of the pain drops down to about zero, so they can start moving and feeling a lot better right away, and so they're like, wow, they had a lot, they had no idea. So it's quite amazing how people respond. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that is amazing. Right. I, when you just even just talked about the warmth, the heat, I'm like, oh, it would be so relaxing mm -hmm. just to get in that warm water. Right. And I had a patient uh, this morning that said, I can't believe I've been miserable for a long time and I was willing to try the pool. Okay. And now I can get in there. And she had no idea. She goes, I'm more likely I'm going to exercise now because I feel so much better. Somebody's had chronic pain for 20 years. <sighs> right. It's like a miracle. It's pretty amazing. I've had patients tear up because they had no idea that they'd feel so good in there. That is, and so faster right. is real critical to healing. Right. A to lot of people, them. within about three weeks, maybe six to seven visits, mm -hmm. they might report they're 50 to 60% better. That, that's amazing. It is amazing. So it's very rewarding for me okay. to see that progress happen so quickly. And the patients, of course, are always kind of very surprised. So yeah, yeah it's great. That is, well, how would a patient get referred for that kind of a therapy, Chris? So. They can talk to their medical provider, but also as PTs, we can make a decision if we think they're appropriate to go into the pool. So okay. they can talk to their medical provider and say, I think I'd like to try the pool. The uh, uh, medical provider will go through their uh, medical, do mm -hmm. a medical review on their chart to see if it's appropriate for them to, for them to go in the water, because there's some patients that aren't appropriate to go in. Okay. Um, but most people are, are probably okay to go in. Um, but we will also look at it. So they can get an order from their doctor to go to physical therapy. Mm -hmm. And then we will do a medical chart review as well and go through that and decide if they're appropriate to go in the pool, if it makes okay. a, if it will make a difference for them. I'm just curious, what would be an example of someone that might need the pool? So patients with arthritis, <gasps> oh, okay. knee arthritis, it can also be shoulder or elbow, but um, basically knee arthritis is a really good one. Back pain, um, sprains and strains, post-surgical. Oh, We've had okay. some patients that were, I've had one that was in a severe car accident and her progress has been amazing and she's 50 to 60% better. We saw her for eight visits. Some people have had multiple surgeries and they come in and they're uh -huh. like, wow, I can't believe I can get in there and, and feel so much better. Oh, it's that's quite, just so comforting amazing. for them yeah. and for you. It, just even watching oh, you yeah. talk about yeah. it, you kind of light yeah. up knowing that yeah. you're really helping someone. Well, it feels really good to make yeah. a difference and help people feel better. Yeah. That's why then, we do what we do. Before mm -hmm. we end real quick, what? Yeah. how can a patient find out more about rehab services in general at Toma Health? So if they go to tomahealth.org, okay. our website, and they can get more information and and that's probably the best way to do that right now. But they also can talk to their medical provider okay. and ask for a referral to our rehab services department. Chris, thank you, and thank All you right. for your work. Yeah, thank it's you. It's exciting. Thank you. Thanks. Well, up next, we have Charlene from Juneau County Aging and Disability Resource Center to talk about an exciting new grant for our community. See you in two. My name is Heidi Stalsberg. I'm the director of Toma Health Hospice Touch Life Choices Palliative Care. We have hospice home care, we have palliative care, which is a home care service, and then we have Serenity House, which is our eight bed residential facility here in Toma. Hospice Touch and Life Choices Palliative Care provides medical services, emotional support, and spiritual resources. Toma Health Hospice and Palliative Care, inspiring health, wellness, and balance. 
The Oakdale Credit Union has spent decades serving Oakdale, Mauston, and Reedsburg. From comprehensive financial services to reliable mortgage loans, we strive to provide unparalleled care. I like the warm and friendly atmosphere each and every time I come in. The staff is very knowledgeable and truly cares about its members. Come and learn more about the Oakdale Credit Union, where we treat you like a member of the family. You want it, we'll find it, you got it. Price match and relax. That's the Rudick Jensen deal, sealed with a platinum level membership. Oil changes, done. Tires, brakes, alignment, all done. Car wash, you got it. Rudick Jensen Auto Mall, New Lisbon. Check out our inventory online at rudickjensen.com. Marco's Italian and American Grill in Warrens, Wisconsin. Hi, I'm Josh Tully from The Josh Tully Show. You're watching Lynx 24, connecting you to the community. The Innovated Coordinated Access and Mobility Grant is allowing Adams and Juneau Counties to hire a full-time mobility manager to coordinate transportation within and between the two counties. We have Charlene Norberg here to tell us what that means for you and for Juneau County. Welcome back, Charlene. It's great to have you. Yes, yeah, thank welcome, you. Welcome, Charlene. Thank you. And you got a grant, and a grant's yeah. free money, right? It is free money. How long have you been working on that? Oh, so we submitted the grant in November of 2018, and okay. we got um, word that we were approved in May of 2019. Did you write the grant? Oh, goodness, no. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> we, hired, a... we hired a grant writer. Oh, okay, okay, good. <laughs> Not a grant writer. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, no. So, um, when I say we, it is um, actually a collaboration between more than just Juno and Adams County. Oh. We are, we, we coordinated with Southwest Wisconsin um, Community Action Program. Oh. They, so they cover five counties for the grant, and then I had wanted to write in for this grant, mm -hmm. um, and they, I found out that they were also interested in writing in for it, and because it's a coordinated access and mobility, we said, hey, let's come together and write this together. So okay. that's what we did. And so their piece will, their piece is um, a uh, creating software for volunteer driver programs, dispatching, um, oh, okay. transportation, yeah. which is perfect because then we'll come into that side of it at the toward the end of the grant. Mm -hmm. um, but our Juno and Adams County, our, how we're starting on our side of it is with this mobility manager. So it's, it's actually kind of seven counties together, which is really, really coordinated. So what is the grant all about then? Yes. So I am this. I am so excited about this grant. Um, <laughs> this grant is aimed. <laughs> it's, it's aimed at healthcare, okay. at, okay. at helping people to access healthcare. Okay. And Juno and Adams County uh -huh. have such a difficult time with that. We know that we need to get access to healthcare. Adams County has Moundville Hospital. We have uh, Mile Bluff and Gunderson. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that you see a lot of people who end up with very costly um, inpatient hospital admissions mm -hmm. and hospitals re have these through Medicare and through other plans you're supposed to try to um, not have re-hospitalizations for the same um, medical condition, okay. condition mm -hmm. within within a certain time period okay. and we've found that when somebody gets to their first follow-up appointment after hospital admission mm -hmm. and subsequent hus um, appointments after that right. or when they are able right. to get to preventive um, visits right. that their risk of being hospitalized goes down so oh. we were thinking how can we get transportation out we have transportation options and we can utilize those transportation options mm -hmm. but Cams how and things like that yeah okay right but how can we coordinate that because the issue is that it's not just getting Juneau County to Mile Bluff or Adams County to Mound View there's a lot of cross 
county you know people live right on the county line some people might mm, live right over fact. into monroe county some people might live right over into vernon county mm. and so it's a it's a bigger issue than just getting our local people to the hospital how can we address that your real rural residents getting them into these medical exactly centers. okay and uh, across the state, there's this mobility manager model, and there's already grants out there to support that. There's federal mm. grants. Um, so, but this would allow us to, instead of writing in for an established grant for this position, this allows us to create the position for our area and really tailor it to the needs that we have mm. to build it and then be able to continue it through these existing grant. So, so you got to oh, hire a, a manager. Yes. And what are they going to manage? They are actually going to be managing, coordinating cross-county transportation. Oh. They're going to be helping us to um, make sure that our fleet is being utilized to the best of its capability, mm. that, our that we're building our volunteer driver system, that we're coordinating be between cross-county lines. Mm. Um, we have the, um, La the um, Family Health um, La Clinica. Um, oh, Rocha Cree okay. in Friendship. Yes, okay, oh. sure. Um, okay. Which is a, a really nice um, alcohol and drug abuse mm -hmm. um, clinic. And so that's one thing that we're thinking, how can we get a lot of people to this clinic? We finally have this great clinic. How can we get people there? Right. This is one way and we can coordinate this. transportation has been a this. barrier for some people right. to it get is. the services they need. It is such a barrier. And this and is all being done out of the uh, Juno County Aging and what, your group? Kind of. Well, so Adams and Juno, we, the yes. Adams, yep, the ADRC director of Adams County, Donna Richards, yeah. and I are this coordinated team. Oh, We've done oh. everything together, and it's a lot of collaborations with Southwest CAP. So we've had tons of meetings to get this going. Right. Southwest CAP is actually the employer of the position, mm -hmm. which allows for a lot of creativity because they get grants that we can't get. Mm -hmm. So after this grant ends, the position will be able to continue through a lot of different grants that they already have. Are they going to be managing or coordinating with any of the actual providers, the healthcare providers? Yes, that's actually a great question. So we have, because it's a federal grant, mm -hmm. we actually have um, performance measures that we have to meet. Okay. And some of those performance measures come from the hospitals because those are that's data that we can't get is mm -hmm. regarding missed appointments oh, and, sure. and different types of um, sure. health programming, especially mm -hmm. like nutrition programming. Oh, right. um, and then there's the weather. Chronic yeah. disease, yeah. yeah. And then there's the weather factor, yeah. Yeah. I can so see why you're so excited about we're, this. So this is, the hospitals actually got on board before, as we were writing in for the grant, and they gave us their support and their recommendation, mm. which was really great because the neat thing about this grant is that we are the only Wisconsin recipients of this grant. Of this federal grant? Yes. Really? Oh, my yes. Wow, congratulations and, for sure. And wow. because, which yeah. is great for us because the federal database for like the reporting and everything uh -huh. that we have to do is really difficult and almost takes a new position just in that of itself. Yeah, that, oh. So the state of Wisconsin, who handles our state transportation grants, mm -hmm. actually is doing all of our federal reporting. All the admin. So the stuff. state yeah. is in on it with great. us. Great. Well, congratulations. It is awesome. Thank you We're so much so for excited. joining us. Very good. Well, yeah, congrats. Way to go. Yeah. We'll have to go out and do a road trip. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so just, you know, people will just keep calling into your ADRCs and requesting transportation, and the hospitals are going to be yeah. helping coordinate those rides, and we are just going to see health go up. Glad to share that with us. Thank you. Nick's Moments in History is next. Stay tuned. The Oakdale Credit Union has spent decades serving Oakdale, Mauston, and Reedsburg. From comprehensive financial services to reliable mortgage loans, we strive to provide unparalleled care. I like the warm and friendly atmosphere each and every time I come in. The staff is very knowledgeable and truly cares about its members. Come and learn more about the Oakdale Credit Union, where we treat you like a member of the family. My name is Heidi Stalsberg. I'm the director of Toma Health Hospice Touch Life Choices Palliative Care. We have hospice home care, we have palliative care, which is a home care service, and then we have Serenity House, which is our eight bed residential facility here in Toma. Hospice Touch and Life Choices Palliative Care provides medical services, emotional support, and spiritual resources. Toma Health Hospice and Palliative Care, inspiring health, wellness, and balance. Promise me we do this together. I promise. Every day it's a little harder as I feel my power grow. Don't you know there's part of me that loves?
Wisconsin. You're watching Lynx 24, connecting, connecting you, you to, to the, the community. community. April, here we are again for Moments in History. Moments in History, Nick. This day, February 27th. Now let's start with a couple of quick ones. Okay. Okay? Uh, the artificial sweetener saccharin was discovered by a Russian chemist, of all things, Konstantin Falberg, in 1879. Saccharin is better known these days as Sweet and Low or Sugar Twin. Uh, this was the gateway to other sweeteners, as I'm sure many other viewers will know, including okay, yourself. Saccharin. But saccharin early sure. on, was, they had like no cow pop back in the 60s. And they I had remember saccharin. Tab. Yeah, there you go, Tab. See? I couldn't remember that. A okay, tab. very good. <clears throat> well, and here's two more coming up on politics and government. Now, while all the young men were gone fighting World War I, the women folk were busy getting the 19th Amendment sent to the states for ratification. As you know, that was the mm -hmm. vote thing. The uh, product of seven decades of meetings, petitions, and protests by women suffragists, the amendment took effect in August of 1920. Women could vote. Ta -da. But wait a minute. Maryland had not ratified the amendment, and when two women attempted to vote the following fall, they were denied the vote. A lawsuit uh, emerged and uh, went to the Supreme Court because there was a lot of discussion about whether this amendment was really legal. So this day, in 1922, the court, the Supreme Court, upheld the 19th Amendment, so it had been tested in the courts for all women in the nation to vote. So there you go. Big day um, in history. That is a big day. Now. After FDR was, this is our second one now, after FDR was re-elected to a fourth term during World War II, towards the end, um, we had had enough of one guy for eight years, or for whatever it was, four times. So we decided on a two-term limit. That's where it started. So it was uh, decided by the 22nd Amendment to the Constitution, ratified this day in 1951. Ike was the first president to come under that rule, okay? One of which is we're very happy about these days. Now, here's a fun one. The first Mardi Gras was celebrated, because we just celebrated yes, Mardi it Gras, did, okay? Right. Mm -hmm. The first one was celebrated back this day back in 1837 in New Orleans, okay? 1837. But New Orleans wasn't the first to start the 40 days of fasting for Lent, okay, with a big eat and drink-a-thon. Nope, it was Mobile, Alabama, back in a century before in 1703 about. At that time, Mobile was the capital of the Louisiana Territory under France. Okay. After we brought the territory from Napoleon back in 1803, Louisiana Purchase, okay. Okay, right. we established New Orleans as the capital of Louisiana. Capital had a few back and forths between Baton Rouge, but it didn't affect the annual Mardi Gras. So by 1837, it was firmly entrenched as part of our Louisiana Purchase, which doubled the size of the U.S. under President um, Jefferson. Mm -hmm. uh, that's another history story, of course. And uh, But, you know, there's actually uh, three older uh, New Orleans. They've got uh, New Orleans, then there was uh, uh, Pensacola, Florida, and Biloxi, okay, in addition. Oh, okay. okay. Are all older ones. And Pensacola is a very, very old um, uh, deal. So very old... Um, Territory. Uh, uh, Mardi Gras. Mardi, Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras. The word. Mardi Gras. Yeah. And, and it's a very <laughs> friendly family. Um, a family friendly Mardi Gras. Uh, in I've been there. At and Pensacola. the Pensacola yeah. one. Is Absolutely. Florida. You can have your kids on your shoulder with nothing to worry about. You know, weird things happening and stuff like that. New Orleans is is a little bit weird. That's the history oh, it's stuff. Very. Um, I Eclectic, maybe, and Today, risque, and you know oh, the New Orleans. It's uh, it's it's Mardi on the Gras. it's out on the edge, yeah. yeah it's a little edgy, edgy, right? Yeah, yeah right. Did yeah. you do a big dinner, big Fat Tuesday thing, Nick? Uh, no, I don't. I don't uh, do any of that stuff. I, there was a time I just take the ashes. There were a lot of people with the ashes sure, on their Ash head. Wednesday. That's yeah, right. on the uh, on the news the other day. Well, we want to thank you for joining us this week on your hometown news, where we are connecting you, you to, the, to community. the community. 